right, so welcome back. We are definitely on our way to getting what we need accomplished to start hitting Rocky Mountain Race Week when it comes. But there is one thing that we will be needing to continue on with that concept. And if you've watched a lot of those videos, you will know that we are missing a major piece to the whole combination. And right in front of me is that piece that we're missing. Alright, so down here you will see we got some steel and everything laying around that we can start building a trailer. So this will be a interesting little thing. Now I thought about getting just a cheap cha trailer from someplace like Harbor Freight, but after kind of looking it over, those things are pretty darn chintzy and they're not as high end as what we're gonna build here for not too terribly much more. So this will be a part of our whole trailer thing and this will probably be a multi-episode series and we'll get to crossfire in between or behind or wherever. I just know I need to take a break from staring at it for so long so I can hit the ground running with it real soon here. So anyways, <clears throat> what we're pretty much looking at here is it's going to be a 5x7 and it's going to be uh, kind of influenced by teardrop trailers. So the axle is going to be way in the back for stability because we're going to have a sleeping area in the trailer itself. That way we don't have to pay for hotels or anything. We can just enjoy what we want. So I guess our first step should probably be going through and start welding up the frame itself. We can get rid of our frame pieces here. that out of the way. Get this out of the way. Then we pretty much just have a frame.
So we got an eye all welded up, and then we threw the tongue down, and then we can zap that in there, and we can get a lot closer to being done. Like this is a 12 foot tongue, and I ran it all the way to the back. That way, if for some reason I need to, I can create a link back there. I plan on making it similar to a trailer hitch end. So we could essentially tow somebody with it if we needed to. That way we wouldn't have to unhitch the trailer. And the bigger part is we have the option of putting one of those trailer hitch baskets in the back if we ever need any more space. So that will be beneficial there. It's like hypothetically we could even uh, attach another trailer behind it. Then we'd really be rocking. But anyways, I'll get zapping this tongue down and then we can come in with the tongue braces and we'll be pretty much done with the platform. All right, so we got the airframe on. That's looking pretty good. Now all that we have to do is flip this thing over and probably could put a couple extra little beads of weld on there or something and we can be done with welding. Then we'll have to attack the axle back there. But that is that. Sitting good. All right, so the worst part about doing a trailer like this is doing the weld it yourself axle. Essentially, the guy I bought it from did not care too much for tolerances. So the problem is this bracket has some heavy bevel from the CNC machine that they were using. So I think it was a, looks kind of like a CNC laser or a plasma, but it's got a bevel on it. Because it could have also been a water jet. They're notorious for beveling. But it's got beveled and then it doesn't even fit on the two inch tube very well. So that's fun. The other fun part is, since it's a drop bracket, there is no like cross angle. Now if you're gonna use it to the full extent of what the hubs can hold, I'm pretty sure this bracket would not hold anymore. But for us, it shouldn't really matter because we are building this thing to park a car on, but we're only gonna park a human on it. So, I'm gonna have to finish welding this up and then we'll have ourselves an axle that we can throw down on the trailer. All right, so there's the trailer. Now you're probably wondering why the axle is so far back when normally you, when you do a utility trailer, you'd want it maybe three fourths of the way back, but Essentially, since this is a camper trailer, you need to be able to be on the trailer itself and keep tongue weight for uh, sleeping purposes if you detach it from the car. And it also allows you to put an enormous amount of weight just in this back section and it won't add to the tongue weight. So, <coughs> so this way, what we're going to put back here are all the tools and the jack and all those heavy things. And yeah. It's like the metal itself is a little flexible because we're just at right where we want it to be. So that's pretty nice. Yeah, so I think we are in business here. All that we gotta do next, just throw a ball end on it and we can start towing it. So, 
This is probably going to be it for this portion. I will, there's another section that needs to come up front here, but it needs to curve. So I will figure out how we're doing that and go from there. All right, so that is the trailer. I finished off by putting these little curved strips here. This is part of the whole plan there. So it's a full eight foot from front to back. I essentially did this because I wanted to curve it, but it's not like I'm gonna curve one of those pieces of square tube. So I'm going to declare this thing pretty much done. I know there's finishing stuff like uh, putting the coupler on there and painting the whole thing, but that is pretty simple and straightforward. So I'm going to do that at a later point and who knows what other videos I'm gonna get out because I just injured myself doing this project. I went and uh, lifted the trailer to tip it over a little bit wrong and pulled something in, in the ab area. So better take that easy before I give myself a hernia or something stupid. So we are going to go forward and get further along. So. Basically, that's that. Uh, a couple finishing things with Crossfire before we can hit the key on that. Finish the uh, fueling and we'll be pretty much set here. Also, I've got a batch of wheels and tires and that type of stuff for the Crossfire coming through. So that'll be some interesting things. Cause I'm pretty sure we're gonna have to modify the rear fender wells to get a bigger, uh, slick in the back for trying to do some quarter mile runs but that is going to be what we accomplish at a later point so i'm going to bail out here and vegetate on the couch and hopefully get this thing to heal so thanks again for watching and we'll have to see you guys later